Hey, this is Joe Gilder from Home Studio Corner. Let's debunk some vocal recording myths today. Recording vocals can be pretty stressful regardless. If you fall for one or any of these myths, it just makes it that much more stressful for you. So we're gonna get rid of those today. Here's the script if you wanna see where we're going. Oh, that's all you get, let's dive in. Myth number one, only use condenser microphones. I got nothing against condensers. This is a condenser. If you look under that desk over there, there's a whole bunch of cases with a whole bunch of different condenser microphones. I think they're wonderful, but they're not the only tool for singing vocals. Tell you what, have you heard of a guy named Michael Jackson? or uh, this little-known singer named Bono, uh, or Brandon Flowers from The Killers. All of these, and many more, have been reported to use dynamic microphones in the studio. Typically, inexpensive, like SM57 dynamic microphones, worth 100 bucks when they're in major studios and could use any microphone they want, worth thousands upon thousands of dollars, but the dynamic gets its name called. That's interesting. In fact, for my band's latest release, we use this beat up old Personas PD70, which is a $130 dynamic microphone. And I would argue it sounds pretty stinking good. Bore me with my own obsession. The purpose of my pointless mission. It wasn't some big grand decision. It was just this microphone was sitting here. I plugged it in and I kind of liked mashing my face up against the mic and singing into the little whatever this thing's called, um, it just had a cool vibe and we ran with it. Myth number two, only use expensive microphones. Fun story, this microphone here, this is the Personas PX1, it's $129, so is this one that I just showed you, the PD70, $129. I have used different microphones in this position for these videos over the years, ranging from this one at $130 bucks to uh, a couple of Roswell mics that are around three, four, five hundred dollars So we're talking huge swing in price, and with every microphone I've used, I get this question constantly, hey, what microphone is that? I like the way it sounds. So what's the takeaway? They all sound good. Bigger takeaway is people like the sound of my voice, spoken word, on a microphone. It really doesn't matter what that microphone is, they tend to like the sound. Now we jump to, hey, what mic is that? Because we think that's part of the equation. And I suppose it's part of the equation, but it's not, it's just a piece of it. It's not the whole thing. Case in point, when I recorded this EP here called Fighter, recorded it at a friend's studio, and we used a $4,000, it was a Bach Audio 251 microphone on the vocals. Four grand. I looked them up. Universal Audio owns it now, and it's six grand. Uh, wonderful microphone, really fun, but is it a thousand times better? Hang on, what's the math? Do the math on that. But is it... 46.5 times better than this microphone? No. And you can hear it for yourself. I mean, it the vocal sounds good, but it honestly, if I can be completely honest, it was a little harder to mix that vocal. There was a huge mid-range to it from that microphone that I don't normally get. And I actually had some trouble with the vocal, even though it was on this big expensive mic. I actually would have preferred some of my cheaper microphones on that session. But still, the vocal turned out great. I don't want to love don't want to see what's under the hood Don't want to be anything but good And I can't be But something's there It still sounds like me, right? So, uh, there you go. Before we continue, I've got a gift for you. It's my ultimate recording checklist. You can have this for free. Just go to homestudiocorner.com slash checklist, and you'll get this single-page checklist you can print out and keep at your desk. And what this does is it gives you some prompts for how to think about your recording sessions, specifically what to record next. So you recorded one thing, and you're sitting there scratching your head thinking, all right, what comes next? This gives you a bunch of different ideas in three different major categories to help you think of what to do next. This is my gift to you. I just hit myself in the head. Uh, <laughs> go to homestudiocorner.com slash checklist to download your free copy. Myth number four, you need pop filters in order to record good sounding vocals. I, I got nothing against pop filters. Obviously, I own two of them, and they're handy, but they're not necessary. Here's why. So pop filter keeps the plosives from like the letter P, P from blasting the microphone and making it sound terrible. Here's what that sounds like. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. 
Right. That's terrible. So if I put this between my mouth and the microphone, now I can go, Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers. But let's say you don't have one of these or someone stole it or you never got around to buying one. You can actually do what I'm doing right now. I've got the microphone pretty close to my face and I just sing off to the side of it instead of singing directly into it like this. I just turn to the side and I can get real close and I can sing my heart out and I can say... Peter Piper picked his pickled pepper so perfectly, and, and nothing pops the microphone. It's a, it's a slightly different tone, right? Maybe it's not quite as bright, but I found that actually ends up working out pretty well for you anyway, because sometimes brightness is the thing you don't want in your vocal recording. So just sing off to the side of the microphone, don't face it directly, and you're good to go. The final myth, you gotta record your vocals really, really hot. You don't. This one's insidious and it causes so much problems. If you think it's a game of how loud can I record this vocal without clipping, you're playing a terrible game that, that no one wins. People tend to think they've gotta record loud vocals because the vocal needs to sit on top of an already loud mix. Guess what? The volume of the vocal when it gets recorded has nothing to do with the final volume in the mix. Vocals will almost always go through a process called compression that will get it nice and loud, no problem. So you don't have to get it louder than the mix to get a good sounding vocal recording. It comes down to a fundamental misunderstanding of gain staging and how volumes work. If you're in a recording session and you can't hear your vocal over the mix, do two things. One, turn the mix down in the system. So turn down everything but the vocals. And two, turn your headphones up. That'll make your vocal louder. And by turning down the mix, that'll make the mix quieter. You'll be able to hear yourself just fine. And you won't be nearly close to clipping, which is what a lot of people do. Let me prove a point here. I've recorded two vocals. Same microphone, same everything. I just adjusted the preamp game to two different levels. Let's compare the two. All right, this is really fun. This first vocal I recorded with the preamp set to 32 dB, which was kind of middle of the road. Plenty of headroom for me to sing loud if I want to without clipping. The second one, I cut the volume in half. So on this Studio Live, I can see the decibels. So I set it to 18 D. That's not half. Oh, well, math is hard. I cut it by a bunch of decibels. Uh, so this is 18 dB versus 32. So if we look at the raw files before any volume adjustments have happened, you can see there's a big difference here. This one is a lot quieter. I'm not advocating for stupid quiet, but just to prove a point, I recorded this a lot quieter than I normally would. And if I come in and kind of level match these just by roughly looking at the audio, um, and then play them back to back, you'll notice they sound, at least to my ear, pretty much identical. We need leaders. We need leaders who look more like friends than angry mobs. Who care more about... So there's no, even between phrases, there was no additional noise. There was none of the things that people like scare you into saying, you got to make sure you record hot enough or you're going to have a bunch of noise in your recordings. That's not true. We're in digital systems where there's plenty of signal to noise ratio. It's kind of not a thing anymore. Uh, so this is something that should free you. So next time you record a vocal or anything, really, have the level, if this is clipping and this is way super low... Uh, down here, if this is clipping and this is super low, have the level somewhere in the middle and you're going to be great. You're going to be fine. You're never going to have this clipping problem. Because guess what? We can always turn it up after the fact and it sounds fine. But if we clip on the way in, like we've clipped the input, it's going to have that buzzy sort of a sound. We can turn it down, but the buzz and the clipping is there forever. I'd much rather turn something up and have it be clean than have something be distorted and turn it down and not be able to fix it. All right, I hope this video has busted some myths for you. If you've got some myths to bust, that's really hard to say, let us know by leaving a comment below. And if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please do. I got a lot more fun stuff coming your way, but you won't see it if you don't subscribe. All right, thanks for watching. See ya. Myth, myth number.